You weirdos who watch my channel seem to like old portable TVs, so I think you'll love this one. Good night. The original Sony Watchmen was a technological marvel of the 1980s. A portable, battery-powered television with an innovative flat black-and-white picture tube that was almost small enough to fit in your pocket. Then by the end of the 1980s, Sony introduced the Color Watchmen using a Color LCD panel. But this Sony Color Watchmen from 1994 is nothing like either of those. It's not black and white, it doesn't use a flat picture tube, nor does it use an LCD, it's definitely not pocket sized, in fact it's not even battery powered, and the only reason it's portable is because it has a handle. It has a 5 inch color CRT, but this is not one of Sony's beautiful little Trinitron tubes, nor is it one of their innovative Indextron picture tubes, which was able to generate a full color image using only one electron gun. Instead, this is just a regular, ordinary color CRT made for Sony by Samsung. All this while keeping their balance. Uh, gate 9. But what it may lack in image quality, it tries to make up for with this generous sized and impressive sounding built-in speaker. It also has an earphone jack on the front, as well as a built-in AM and FM radio tuner. You can see the tuning dial on the top there, and there's the tuning knob. There's the volume control for the radio and TV. A function selector switch for TV, FM, and AM, and a band selector switch for VHF and UHF. On the back, the biggest thing is the Sony logo molded into the case. It's the model FDT5BX5, and has a single built-in antenna for both the FM radio and the TV, but it also has a 3.5 millimeter external TV antenna jack which you would connect to an ordinary type of antenna using an adapter like this. But you can also connect it directly to a video source through the AV jacks. You switch it to video, then you get composite video input and mono audio input. And down here on the back are controls for adjusting the brightness, contrast, color, and hue, also known as tint. And there's the certification sticker. Sony Corporation of Japan manufactured October 1994. But like I said earlier, this cannot run on batteries. It can only run on a 13.5 volt DC power supply. And here it is, the Sony ACE55 13.5 volt DC 1.5 amp power supply, which is about the same size as a stack of three cassette tapes. And to put the size of the TV itself into perspective, it's a little bit taller than a VHS tape. First, a little sample of the radio. I'll pull out an extend antenna. This is FM. Village Starbucks was one of hundreds nationwide that saw workers walk off the job. On Netflix, December 20th. WNYC. Independent journalism in the public interest. 93.9 FM and AMA 20. NPR News and the New York Conversation. That built-in speaker definitely sounds very good. City, California. I'm now let's try Brown. AM. In the Mideast, communication... A new executive order and a bomb shot. All right, and uh... Well, George Santos says he will not run for election. <laughs> Sounds pretty good on AM too. Unfortunately, the earphone jack on the front is not in stereo, but nonetheless, I'll give you a direct hookup sample of what it sounds like.
If you like what you're hearing. Why, yes, I do. Tell a friend about us. I can totally do that. 1071 The Boss and 997 FM. New Hampshire, softrockradio.net, the lighter side of classic rock, and more. Doctor, my eyes have seen the years. Now in TV mode, it's not going to pick up anything because there's no more analog TV on the air. But this green bar that's moving back and forth is the tuning dial. It's pointing to the numbers at the top of the screen, which indicate which channel it would be tuned to if it stopped at one of these numbers. And you can also control it with the up and down buttons down here. There is no way to specifically pick one channel, you just have to let it scan and find something. Now if I switch it to UHF, the bar changes to red, and it's now pointing to these numbers at the top of the screen. And because there are more UHF channels than VHF, it doesn't have enough space to print out each number, so it just goes by tens up to channel 69. Now to give it something to tune to, I connected it to this old Digital 8 Handycam, which has an RF modulator add-on. So if I turn on the Handycam, give it a second. Hey, we have something on the TV that matches what the camcorder is showing because it's transmitting the camcorder's video through this RF adapter tuned to channel 3 and that's what the TV is picking up and I can press the channel call button and the green bar appears halfway between 2 and 4 indicating channel 3 now I'll switch it to channel 4 and retune it and there it is pointing to channel 4 on the TV and needless to say the color watchman is working better for its age than the handycam is this of course means that you can connect it to anything that puts out an analog TV signal. A VCR, a vintage computer, or a vintage video game console. But for the best quality, you should use a direct connection instead of going through RF. You can do that simply by flipping the switch on the back from TV to video and then connecting your source to the video and audio input jacks. Now I have it connected to my VCR and I'll give you some samples of what that looks like and sounds like. Just keep in mind that the actual diagonal size of the screen is only 5 inches or about 13 centimeters so you'll probably be watching a greatly magnified version of it. Hi. You know like most people I love LA. It's got a little bit of everything. But there is somewhere else I like to be when I'm not here. It's a place as bizarre as it is beautiful, where things are never quite the way you'd expect them to be, where you can swim in the ocean with huge cod only inches away, a place with lush prehistoric rainforests, with sunshine virtually all year round. It's at least four times the size of Texas, but with less people than we have in this city alone. And it contains more untouched wilderness than anywhere in the world. Yet it has a nightlife that equals everything we have here. It's called Northern Australia, and it's like nowhere else on Earth. It's St. Louis beyond its name with license. It is the heartbeat of the city. Its personality. Its depth. What it means to the community. What a difference it can make. Camel wax is bigger than all of us. It's today, it's tomorrow, and it's most importantly, our history. So, the image is bright and the colors are vivid and accurate. But high resolution, it is not. It's like looking at video through a screen door. I wanted to determine the actual viewable resolution of the TV. So I took a picture of it displaying a blue screen, printed it out, and carefully counted the pixels, 
or phosphor dots or whatever you want to call them. I drew a horizontal and vertical line across the center of the screen and then counted the pixels in groups of 10. So those are the tick marks you can see. And my total was 209 horizontal by 73 vertical. However, it is true that the electron gun can illuminate only part of a pixel as it scans across the screen. So CRTs have an inherent form of sub-pixel rendering. So that is not necessarily a hard limit to the viewable resolution. And when I'm zoomed in on it, you may notice that the phosphor dots are actually staggered by half a pixel. So you could say that that provides the equivalent of doubling the vertical resolution just on every other column. Nonetheless, that isn't enough to make up for the fact that the picture tube in this TV is physically incapable of resolving fine detail. But back in the 90s when this TV was new and most broadcast and cable TV programming had nice large text that was designed to be easily readable even on a rather low resolution standard definition screen, it wasn't such a big downside. In case you're wondering, no, the TV is not multi-system. When I switch my Mavica from NTSC to PAL, we get a rolling black and white image, and it does not have a manual vertical hold control to get it to lock onto the different refresh rate. So that's the Color Watchman from 1994. What it lacks in resolution, it makes up for in other positive attributes especially the good quality built-in speaker. And best of all, it's a Sony. Now turn it to the left and hold it until all of the windows are lowered to the desired position. By the way, this works for all windows. 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 This works for all windows.